Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Stuart Allen Swerdlow. And Janet Diane Moria Swerdlow. And this is the Expansions News Podcast for the third week of April 2018. And it's been a very busy news week. Uh, one of the biggest stories that uh, was disturbing was the, um, the, I don't want to say accident, the explosion on Southwest Airlines flight uh, 1380 from New York's LaGuardia Airport to Dallas. And on that flight, uh, there was a woman named Jennifer Riordan, Riordan, 43 years old, who is from Albuquerque, a mother of two, who was returning from a business trip, and she worked for uh, Wells Fargo as a, as a bank executive. And she sat next to the window, I believe it was uh, row 14, and uh, the uh, engine exploded on the left uh, engine of the plane, and shrapnel uh, went through the window and uh, sucked her out halfway through the window up to the waist at 32,500 feet, going 600 miles per hour. So obviously, there was a big uh, attempt to pull her back into the window, and then to cover the window with uh, coats and blankets, which were also sucked out of the plane. And uh, they're calling the pilot a hero. It's a female named Tammy Jo Schultz, who then made a very sharp uh, turn and descent, uh, landing in Philadelphia Airport. Uh, those on board said they heard a loud boom, and the 737 dropped immediately. Oxygen masks were dropped from the ceiling, and passengers uh, said their prayers and braced for impact and expected to die. Now, according to Southwest Airlines, they have a preliminary examination of the engine that blew up, and they said that it shows evidence of metal fatigue. Now, I have to make a statement here, because there should never be metal fatigue. Uh, as, as a source of an accident like this because these engines are supposed to be inspected and in fact according to Southwest Airline this engine was inspected just two days before this event so uh, all the um, US and European airlines that fly 737s have ordered a mandatory inspection of those engines I will have to say, make a statement here and say that Southwest Airlines apparently has very poor maintenance and a very bad record lately. Just days before this event, a Southwest Airlines flight to New Orleans flew into severe weather, causing severe turbulence and damage in, inside the plane and causing passengers also to think they were going to die. And the plane then, in the middle of the severe thunderstorm, was diverted to a Pensacola airport. And of course, this has happened too many times on Southwest Airlines. You may recall uh, just a few years ago, we were flying into Chicago on Southwest Airlines and the winds were very extremely high and I couldn't understand how they could possibly fly into the airport with those winds. And as we came into the, to the landing at uh, Chicago airport, the wings of the plane were going like this and it looked like it for sure would hit the ground but uh, the pilot did a very good job and we landed. But, my opinion, it was very dangerous and it should not have been attempted and should have been diverted uh, someplace else. Anyway, uh, this poor woman uh, hung out of the uh, hole in the airplane for quite a few minutes. They were unable to pull her back in, the people sitting next to her, because it was too, too powerful, and so, until two men... Uh, got up out of their seats and pulled her back in, but of course by then it was too late. Um, my opinion again, uh, Southwest Airlines has overextended themselves. They used to be only in the United States. Now they fly to the Caribbean, to Central America, I believe even to parts of South America. I think they've overextended them themselves. Their, their prices are too high and they are cutting uh, costs in ob maintenance, obviously. And so I am sure we will hear a lot more about that uh, in the future. I'm sure that the family of that woman uh, will do something against the airline because um, that should never have happened in the first place, especially if the engine was inspected. 
Now another story which is disturbing and that happened in the town of Duma, Syria, which as you know was the place where uh, there was an alleged uh, gas attack that killed, uh, again, last time I told you there were several numbers of people that were killed, anywhere from 43 to, to over 80, depend what news service you read. Well, um, they interviewed a Syrian doctor uh, who said that the patients that he treated were not overcome by gas, but by oxygen starvation in a rubbish-filled tunnel in basements where they lived on a night of wind and heavy shelling that stirred up a dust storm. And according to this uh, interviewer who went through the town in Syria, he said there were many people he talked to amid the ruins of the town who said they never believed in those gas stories, uh, but said that they were uh, put out by an, uh, an Islamic group. And that, uh, according to Dr. Rahabani, who has a clinic uh, under in, in a basement area, he says, and I quote, I was with my family in the basement of my home, 300 meters from here on the night, and all the doctors know what happened. There was a lot of shelling by government forces and aircraft were always over Duma at night. But on this night, there was a wind and huge dust clouds began to come into the basements and cellars where people lived. People began arriving, suffering from hypoxia, which is oxygen loss. Then someone at the door, which he called White Helm, which I, to I told you about last week, shouted gas and panic began and people started throwing water over each other. And that's when the White Helmets filmed the video saying that there was a gas attack. But according to this doctor, he says, what you see are people suffering from hypoxia, not gas poisoning. And uh, according to this reporter, he couldn't find one person in the town who even knew about the story and uh, had no idea what was going on. So all of this was staged for international news services like CNN and BBC and so on, and Western media. And that is why the Russian forces refused to allow anyone in to examine things because they knew things would be planted. Speaking of Islamic terrorists, according to another news story, there are Iranian-backed militants operating across the United States and they're not being stopped. They are sleeper cells and agents who are poised to launch a large-scale attack in America. The Iranian agents are tied to the terror group Hezbollah and they have already been discovered in the United States, but no one is doing anything about it. And it says that Hezbollah, which is active in the Middle East, Latin America, and in the United States, uh, many of their operatives have been arrested for activities conducted in their own country. However, it's said that they've arrested two individuals plotting terrorist attacks in New York City and Michigan. As foreign people may not know, that Michigan has one of the largest Arab slash Islamic populations outside of the Middle East. Most of them are in the Detroit area, though. Um, it said the individuals who were arrested had significant weapons training from Hezbollah. And according to this intelligence report, Hezbollah is probably the most experienced and professional terrorist organization in the world, even more so than ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And we know that both of those were trained and created by American and Israeli intelligence agencies. It says Hezbollah is smart. They're very good at keeping their communications secure, keeping their operational security secure. And again, from a high-profile attack perspective, they're good at improvised explosive devices. Now, here's what you need to know about these um, so-called terrorists in the United States. Many of them pose as Mexicans when they cross the border. Uh, they're all set up by intelligence agencies. Uh, the weapons that have been found in Mexico near the U.S. border were made in the United States and Israel. So, um, most of these are part of an assassination and vigilante programming uh, group, which leads me to the next story, which I find very almost amusing. 
and that is um, there was a uh, journalist by the name of Curtis Waltman who works for a Boston nonprofit agency called Muck Rock. And he asked uh, uh, for some Freedom of Information uh, uh, paperwork. And he got information that the U.S. government may have been secretly collecting documents on remote mind control and forced memory blanking, which he says was accidentally leaked. So no, so no accidents. The reporter claims to have been mysteriously sent the proof after filing a request for, the different, uh, for a different set of information. And he said what he got sounded like a plot from X-Files into bizarre psychoelectronic weaponry. These claims uh, said that they use electromagnetic forces to achieve their aims, including inducing intense pain, itching, or even rigor mortis. The reporter, Curtis Waltman, was investigating activists in Antifa and the white supremacist groups that it opposes. And uh, he got material provided by Washington State Fusion Center, which is a Department of Homeland Security affiliate, which provides information. And among the records were including emails, intelligence briefings, and bulletins was a compressed file called EM Effects on the Human Body. It's entirely unclear how this ended up in the release. Well, there are no accidents. It was done on purpose, and I believe this person is even covering up what he received. Um, it said it detailed a number of proposed devices and techniques that aim to manipulate the human mind. Strange techniques for microwave hearing, that's the voices in your head, potentially, uh, remote brain mapping, that, which would let third parties monitor your thoughts. Well, that's already happened. Um, he says that the security agency had the ability to assassinate U.S. citizens covertly or run covert psychological control operations to cause subjects to be diagnosed with ill mental health. So in other words, if you hear voices in your head or get controls or, or instructions, uh, that would make you mentally ill, which would then take the government out of the possibilities that they did it. So you're just a mentally ill person. Most of them involve the use of drugs like LSD for interrogation purposes or for the purpose of mind control. Now here's interesting that he says, millions of dollars poured into the project had few practical results. Well, that's baloney, but had many results that you know about. And he says the information relates to similar mind control experiments using electromagnetic fields uh, that uh, might, and capital letters, might uh, have weapons uh, like this that exist, like HARP and so on. Well, I think they're trying to downplay the truth here. Uh, I think this information was released on purpose uh, because it actually will trigger people into the mind control. And speaking of all of this subterfuge, German prosecutors cleared a performance of a satirical play named after Adolf Hitler's book Mein Kampf. And, uh, the, and, pro and, free, and it gave free entry to all spectators who would wear a swastika. I thought that was illegal in Germany. Well, I'll get to that. Uh, the theater is in the Bavarian lakeside town of Constance, which is actually a very nice area. Um, and it was to celebrate Hitler's birthday in, uh, of April 20th, 1889. Uh, under German law, publicly displaying swastikas and other Nazi symbols is illegal unless... It is done as part of an artistic performance covered by constitutional guarantees of free speech. Well, that's very interesting. So all you have to do is say you're doing a performance, and then mm -hmm. you can show your swastika. The region's German-Israeli society has called for a boycott of the play, which Hitler wrote in prison before taking power. Uh, Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said Germany bears a responsibility to protect Jewish life more than 70 years after the end of the Holocaust, in which the Nazis murdered 6 million Jews. So they protect Jewish life by letting in hostile fundamentalist Muslims. That makes a lot of sense to me. Anyway, um, the Nazis and their ideas are alive and well in Germany, as we know, 
And as I have told you, I have worked in Germany a lot, and recently a lot in Berlin, and I have met many Nazis and people who support Nazis openly. So the German laws are just a bunch of malarkey. Now here was an interesting story I found about France, uh, where they found the skull of a Stone Age cow who had brain surgery 5,400 years ago. How could that be? Well, he must have had very good insurance, the cow. I would think so. Yes. And they must have had socialized medicine back then. Because this is baffling scientists. Whenever I hear that, I know it's full of baloney. <laughs> the skull has a large hole on the right side of the forehead, which was believed to be created by a human using a crude surgical tool. You don't use a crude surgical tool tool to cut into a skull and to something's brain. Especially a cow. It's not like it's going to lay there for you. Well, that's the next thing. Is like, it must have had, you know, Unless they tied anesthesia. It off, or they tied it down somehow, but I mean, that's, you know, that's a anyway, large animal. It said the cave, they call them cavemen, mm -hmm. executed what they call trepanation, which is an ancient form of brain surgery, and it remains a mystery. One theory is that Stone Age people practiced the technique on the cow in preparation for a human operation. Yeah. I don't think so. They would have had to do something to hold that big cow down. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. And here's the thing, is that they said, suggest maybe the brain surgery was performed in order to save the cow. But they found hundreds of cow skeletons, suggesting that people at the time didn't care too much about one particular cow. So you mean you they hundreds. found hundreds of them with holes in them? No, they, just, just they, they the found this one with them, but there were so many I cow see. bones, like why would they care about this one cow? And how would they know the cow had a brain problem? Mm -hmm. You understand? Unless the cow went Hold to on. its doctor's office Maybe. and said, I have a problem with my brain, my cow brain. Um, they said that uh, cranial surgery requires great manual dexterity and a complete knowledge of the anatomy of the brain and vestal distribution. So then, how can they call them cavemen and crude tools to enter the skull? Something's wrong with the article, because well, it's contradicting. Obviously, they're not telling us everything they know. And then it goes on to say that, to date, thousands of human skulls bearing signs of trepanation have been unearthed by archaeological sites around the world. So it's not just in France. They've been found everywhere. So obviously it was a technology and a protocol that was known globally, which to me means it came from a high technology of a global nature previously existing, perhaps Atlantean. And it's interesting because I was in that part of France in the late 90s, and I remember I found the cave there, mm -hmm. and we found a lot of things that didn't belong. Anyway, now to my earth changes because this is important, because now they're even saying that the earthquake situation in California is more dire than they ever believed before. And uh, they expect a seven or more greater along the uh, San Andreas fault system in the north, particularly along the Hayward fault line, which would cause great damage to San Francisco and the entire Bay Area. But interestingly, guess what? Here in Michigan, there was an earthquake a couple of days ago that was uh, felt, uh, that was indeed centered in the Canadian border with Detroit. And uh, they said it was actually across the Detroit River um, and all of, all of Detroit was shaken up. I'm surprised that not more buildings fell down because it's so they're crepid in Detroit. There's a lot of old buildings, though, that were built a long time ago, and they're very well structured, mm -hmm. made of stone. And, and another thing that happened is that a volcano in southern Japan erupted for the first time in 250 years. People, there's no such thing as, a, this, as an extinct or dormant volcano. This was Mount Io, and the last time it erupted was 1768. And it's 620 miles southwest of Tokyo, but... Last month, in March, another volcano erupted violently for the first time in seven years. And did you know that Japan has 110 active volcanoes? That's a lot. That's a lot for a little country. So why do you think we had an earthquake in Detroit? 
because we didn't want one in this part of the. That's a good year. idea. So we told it to do it over there. But if you remember, if you remember, last April we had an earthquake in this part of mm -hmm. Michigan. It seems like every April we have an earthquake. Hmm, that's interesting. And if you notice that. Yeah. But why do you? What is, is it from? The and fall if you remember, lines, the remember tectonic plates. About when was it? Seven years ago, when we had that big earthquake here in April, mm -hmm. and the whole house right. was shaking pretty violently. Mm -hmm. So that was also April. April is a bad month here. Yeah. It's an active month. Yeah. So, but why do you think the earthquake happened? Well, that's not far from the uh, the uh, St. Lawrence Seaway fault line that goes through the Great Lakes, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. then it goes just south of Detroit. And so that, the, the, and it says in the article that um, it's not uncommon to have earthquakes in, in, in that part of Michigan. Mm -hmm. No, we really don't, haven't seen those, though, have we? Well... This was almost four on the Richter scale, so That's pretty uh, for, for Michigan, that was a you know, big one. Right. But remember, we've had as much as, what was that other one, six point something the last time when we had five. the whole house shaken. Five something, five, like five, five six. six, six yeah, that's something like, it was, it was more, more than I cared for. Yeah. All right, so are you ready for me? <laughs> Am I ever? But yeah. go on. All right. Well, you're talking about things that are in the news. So one thing that I'm sure most people are familiar with by now is the death of Barbara Bush. Mm. Okay, 92 years old. That's an 11 and an 11 year. So with that in mind, yeah. did you know that the Bush family, two days later, welcomed in a new baby? Yes, boy. I heard about that. So one soul goes out and one soul you comes in. You think it's the same one? It's possible. And I said, and you laughed at me, but who knows how long she really was dead for? We don't know. Well, I mean, people did see her and speak to her before. We don't know that. Who? What people? No one that spoke to me. So I'm just saying, you know, that's a possibility. But what's interesting to me is that, as you know, Princess Kate is due to give a baby, for a baby to be born Ooh, soon. Oh, yeah. And so I'm wondering if we're going to see an, a royal, and what comes to mind is Prince Philip. How about the queen? She's 92. Well, that's too, but isn't he, isn't he 92 as well? So you're older or younger? He's 96. Okay. So. Oh, maybe him. That's what I was thinking. He's creepy. Yeah. I, well, they're all creepy. Yeah, but, but he's I was, really creepy. They're all really creepy. He looks like a corpse. Anyway, I'm wondering if somebody will pass just before Kate's baby is born now. Well, someone also told me, won't say who, that. Papa Bush may pass on in a couple of weeks as well. well and that there might be another uh, Bush baby coming in as well. A Bush baby? A Bush baby. Mm -mm -mm. And the, the mother's name, this was so funny, because she married uh, Ralph Loren's son. Uh -huh. So her name is Lauren. But so her know, name is Lauren Loren. So we know she has a lot of good clothing. Yeah, Lauren Loren. Okay, Lauren Loren. Got it? L -O -L -L. L-L. L Bush mm -hmm. Loren. Anyway, I thought that was interesting, and what's interesting as well is Neil Bush said, the circle of life, God is good. So that's what I'm telling you about. When Saul leaves, another comes in. He said God is good. That's what he said. Which God? That's what I was going to say. He didn't say which God. We can't really say bad things about him. Yeah. Anyway, and the couple has another two-year-old boy, which was also interesting because a two is a one plus a one. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just was interesting. So the next thing I want to tell you about is Bill Gates is back in the news, He's, or has he ever left? He is now backing a $1 billion plan mm -hmm. to cover the Earth in Big Brother-type satellites. That's nice of him. Capable of streaming live and unfiltered HD footage of the planet. Mm -hmm. So let's stop right there. We know it's, it might be live, but most likely it's not going to be unfiltered. No. They're only going to show you... And it's going to be spying in your bathroom, too. It's only, they're only going to show you what they want you to see. And in my opinion, it's not even the ELF microwave pulses. It's just what they're showing you is going to control your perception of your world. So if here, it's coming from him, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Well, he's only again, he's a puppet, you know, that's well, his, you knew him. Well, not personally, personally. I well, met I met him, but I may can't say I knew him. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it said that there'll be five hundred strong networks of a five hundred strong network of spacecraft together. And there's a they head of it this spacecraft? Oh yeah. That's interesting. That yeah. satellite. No, they said spacecraft. Hmm. It said that they will include uh, tracking illegal fishing, monitoring the weather, tracking natural migrations. Mm -hmm. And then the Earth Now, that's what they're calling the project. And then they're saying this is the founder, but you know Bill Gates is backing it, supposedly. It's his money. Russell Hannigan said, our objective is simple. We want to connect you visually with Earth in real time. That's it, right? We believe the ability to see and understand the Earth live and unfiltered will help all of us better appreciate and ultimately care for our one and only home. 
So in my opinion, again, what are they going to show you and how are they going to control you they're by what they're showing you? They're going to come down here. It's like the polar bear that we've talked about. You know, somebody snapped that on a vacation somewhere mm -hmm. and then they said, oh, this poor polar bear doesn't have any icebergs. You know, mm -hmm. he's out there floating. In yeah, the, because oh. they split it in the middle of the summertime right. and they didn't show you the whole wide angle exactly. picture where there was more ice on the other side. Right. So that, you know, this is what now they'll have the ability to do. And this, this story came to my attention because in my opinion, something wasn't right. This was about an attorney who self-immolated. I heard about that. Now and this, it was a stupid reason. Well, the, now this to me, somebody dumped him. Because he left a suicide note in a shopping cart near his body. Mm -hmm, right. So it sounds to me like maybe somebody put his body in the shopping right. cart and then took his body somewhere and disposed but, of but it. But he left a note? He left a note in the shopping cart. And what did it say? It said that most humans on the planet now breathe air made unhealthy by fossil fuels and many die early deaths as a result. My early death by fossil fuel reflects what we are doing to ourselves. And he also sent uh, or emailed a copy of the note to the New York Times. But didn't it also say in there that he was sorry for the mess? I'm not in my, the article I read. Cause it's, I, it's possible. I but. read that he left the note near his body that said sorry for the mess. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what kind of, you know, benefit is this to anybody how is that going to help anybody setting yourself on fire you well know? the issue is is he was a high profile gay rights attorney mm -hmm. and it said that that he apparently supposedly um did this in brooklyn's prospect park i used to go there when i was a child and that is where his body was found charred it's a bad and, neighborhood with now. a suicide note in a shopping cart. Mm -hmm. So to me, somebody wheeled him down there and put the note in there. I, I don't think, think he so. did it to himself. I would doubt he's, it. He's a 60-year-old, wealthy, wealthy, successful attorney. Yeah. So okay. somebody got rid of him. I'm sure he didn't give a damn about global warming. And then um, Susan Summer, the general counsel for the mayor's office of criminal justice in New York City, said that David Buckle was all about justice, but he was also all about what it means to be human. He was a very smart and methodical lawyer. He knew his craft and his trade and was strategic in how to build the blocks toward a sweeping victory. This doesn't sound like somebody who's no. going to commit suicide no. by fire. But it does sound like someone who maybe caught on to some legal case that was going to expose somebody, so they got rid of they him. They got rid of him. So anyway, I just found that very interesting. And then... We talked before about how the agenda is to control your children. And I spoke about this specific topic in the UK uh, maybe a couple years ago, which apparently now is starting to infiltrate the US. Mm -hmm. And that is, is that preschool children are now being told that they cannot say the words best friend. I heard about that. Apparently, Pentucket Workshop Preschool's best friend policy that was in Massachusetts. is being blasted, blasted by a parent who says her daughter got upset because she was told by a teacher she could not call another student her best friend. And why can't they? They said in their handbook, well, they don't have it in their handbook specifically, but the school sent the parent a letter, and it says it has been our experience, which spans decades, indicating the parents, you know, has only been a parent for a few right. years, yeah, and they've so been... you don't know anything. Right. That the use of the term best friend, even when used in a loving way, can lead other children to feel excluded, which can ultimately lead to the formation of cliques and outsiders. Which happens anyway. That's right. And it says the school will continue to discourage children from saying the term. And then they won't be able to say him or her right. or anything This or else. that. So mm -hmm. the parent wants to um, remove the child. Good. I would take saying, my kid out of there. Yeah, saying that it's good, it's good for a child to have a best friend. It gives them a place of feeling right. secure. And all kids have a best friend. So what's the, what's the problem? Right. And, and also the parent said, I want her to be able to express her thoughts and feelings in a healthy way as ch children should. Because now the child is afraid to use the term best friend because she thinks she did something wrong. Mm -hmm. So they're imprinting your children very, very young. And these kids don't remember these lessons. I remember some things that impacted me when I was in you know, preschool, kindergarten, and below that. So it stays with you, these things. It's, it's not healthy. And self-poisoning, of course, always tends to be Who in the news. Now? Well, it's, a, it's everybody is doing it. Apparently, this man named Dr. Paul Jared Frank, who's a celebrity cosmetic dermatologist in New York City, said that the largest growing demographic at his practice are millennials in their late 20s and early 30s for preventative Botox. What does that mean, preventative Botox? Well, I'm going to tell you. Apparently, it means the concept of treating the facial muscles that you use more frequently in order to avoid wrinkles from forming. 
So they're starting as young as 20. So, wait a second. They are putting Botox in or yes, not Yes, they in? are. That's why they call it preventative Botox. This is the biggest... Oh, I thought you were preventing Botox. No, no. It's the That's treatment what... is called preventative oh, Botox. Oh, very confusing. So the point is, is that as young as 20, the, the practice has increased since 2010 among the 20 to 29-year-olds mm -hmm. almost 30%. Mm -hmm. See, I don't need that, see. According just, to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. I can't Surgeons. help it that I just have, you know. Now, in case that. you don't know what Botox is specifically, it's a popular brand name for botulinum toxin type A, which good. is a neuromodulator that works as a selective muscle relaxer. Doesn't it paralyze your muscles? Yes. It's a protein made by a commonly known bacteria that temporarily par paralyzes muscles, and each syringe costs between four hundred and twelve twelve hundred dollars a syringe. You're kidding. So, and that means, I guess, depending on how many syringes you need, but that's something you have to keep up on. But why do you want to put poison in your face? Really, and, and especially, and paralyzed. but people are getting used to it. Like last week, I showed you or talked to you about that woman who was getting the. Derriere implants, uh -huh. butt plumping, they were calling it, oh. with her nine-year-old daughter watching. Right. Uh -huh. And she said, this is just a normal part of keeping yourself healthy. No, it isn't. So now they're claiming like Botox is exactly the same thing. Oh, how ridiculous. So they're discouraging you from being an individual. Oh. They want you all to look alike. So stop it. You know that the, the And lines... this is why we have a lunatic running the asylum, because they're a lunatics. Well, the pe over. if the people didn't buy these products and do these things, it would go away. So you can't really blame the people running the asylum because the ones are demanding it and using it. It's mind control. It is mind control, and it's trying to get one mind, uh, one mind pattern for the entire population. So I'll just quickly show you my two books. Your two reality books? They're my, two books. my two books. Two reality of sexuality, thirteen cubed. Both of these will help you learn how to control your own mind, so somebody else doesn't do it for you. And then this was a now. Grizzly body parts. What? I want you to get used to all these uh -oh. kind of things. There is a bar this? in uh, Yukon in Canada. The Yukon. In the Yukon Territory. Uh -huh. That is in the news because there is a man from Manchester. Manchester. Who was in a race, uh, the Yukon Arctic race last February. Mm -hmm. Who, He's 46 years old. Mm -hmm. um, he had to abandon the race and get treated for frostbite at a hospital. Because he's from Britain and they don't know how to deal with cold. So apparently they said they couldn't save the toes. He had needed three amputated. Oh no! And he wanted to keep the toes. What? Because there's a bar in um, Dawson City. Yeah, Dawson City called the Downtown Hotel, Dawson mm. City Yukon, that has something called the Sour Toe Cocktail. Oh my God! Where they I heard use about that long Amputated time ago. toes. So this man six, six, wants six. to send it there. So the bar collects, and they have ten of these amputated toes. Oh, and people pay to put that in their drink. Oh uh, well, no, they pay for the drink. I don't know what they pay, but they you, if you drink it, these are the rules of joining the club. First of all, you're not allowed to swallow the toe. Oh yeah, that makes sense. But it, that did happen twice, and then you get charged five hundred dollars. Ah. And then, oh, so they reuse it? Yes. Ah. They said you can drink it fast, you can drink it slow, but your lips must touch the toe. So there's These are a sick people. There's a man who calls himself the toe master, who's responsible for watching over the toes. And he says that when they get them, they're sterilized by drying them. And then they first they put them in medical fluid, Why? then they drain them. And listen to this. Then they chop off any fat or veins that might be hanging out. I don't out. want to hear any more. Then they sit them in rock salt for six weeks. They become preserved, and then they rotate the toes, I, I guess, through this process. I don't want to hear process. about this. And the, this guy thinks the offer of three new toes is just amazing. And that's why Canada has never been a major power. But I'm saying, why would people want to do these kind of things? It's just, to me, it's really terrible. But there you go. Something a. for everybody. A. And then, of course, we have talked for a long time about bringing back the woolly mammoth, right? I like woolly mammoths. So, and we always tell you that if this is what they're telling you, they've already done it. Oh, I, I know that. So now they're saying that Harvard University scientists who are about to publish scientific papers are using DNA from a woolly mammoth that has been preserved in Siberian ice for more than 42,000 years. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to create, um, let me see, I have it here. Mm-hmm. Oh, a 20,000 hectare, hectare Ice Age Safari Park in a remote part of Siberia. Okay, listen to me very carefully. In Siberia, they already exist 
living ones well, that, I were, agree with that, that were videoed by the Soviet army for decades. And they're telling you that now. Mm -hmm. But this is how they're introducing this to you. And, and, and I've said this story many times, that where they, where they take the DNA and they put it in a regular elephant, mm -hmm. they can, that story's been around since at least 1999 that I know of. Well, you're going to be interested to know that they're going to modify elephant cells, but they're not going to put it in a surrogate elephant according to the article. Oh, they're not? No. They are going to use an artificial womb. Uh -huh. And then the hybrid is going to be called an Asian elephant and a mammoth. Now, what interested me about this is the fact that they said this is going to save the Arctic. How? They never said in this article. I think oh, they I, said, said it's supposed to bring back the vegetation. How? But have, I don't know. See, to me They're that was eat the ve vegetation. Right. And plus, out in Siberia, there's not a lot of vegetation no, to eat. No, there's not. So I just thought that was really kind of a bizarre story, but because they're telling oh. you again of what they're going to do, and we keep telling you if they're telling you they're going to do it, they've done it. Listen to me. They did it 20 years ago, and I know that for a fact. I don't think, as you said, I don't think they ever really got rid of them. And so. then they never finished the story, because that time I was in Norway, and they had it in the Norwegian newspaper, mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the elephant was pregnant oh, and going to give birth, and there was nothing ever again about it. Yeah. So they've done it a long time ago. Yeah. And even then, if they told you 20 years ago, that means, as I said, mm -hmm. I don't think they ever went out, of, went out, but that's my... Well, they still opinion. exist anyway. So remember what I tell you about New World Religion, the demons, the angels, and all of this. Well, guess what's mm -hmm. back in the news is the Vatican's annual exorcism course. So apparently they have been doing this since uh, 2005, and I've, been, I've told you about this before, but I'll just update you a little bit. It's a week-long Vatican course, and it's described as the only international series of lectures of its kind. What, what is it for? Exorcism. Uh, 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 oh, exorcism. It's entitled Exorcism mm -hmm. and the Prayer of Liberation. So. Liberation from what? The, uh, liber I don't know. The demons? Yeah, liberating the person from mm -hmm. demon possession or demonic possession. Oh, I have a whole list of people for them. So the Catholic priests in several countries are telling that there has been an increase in the number of people reporting signs of demonic possession. Oh, I know it. And of course we have to remember last year Pope Francis told priests that they must not hesitate to refer parishioners to exorcists if they suffer from genuine spiritual disturbances. In fact, in Italy alone, half a million people per year wow. seek exorcisms. Really? That's a lot of people. Well, those Italians are nuts. Plus, it says the practice is also on the rise in the UK. Mm -hmm. And there's such a demand for courses in exorcism by the priests that they're now giving their own courses in Sicily and also the city of Chicago here in the U.S. What, because there's a lot of demons in Chicago? Well, that the U.S. priests want to mm -hmm. have these exorcism classes, and they don't want to wait till every April to go to... Italy, they want to have them here. Right, we can have our own demons. So, as I've told you before, in the Catholic Church, a major exorcism can only be carried out by a priest with a bishop's approval, mm. which involves the invocation of the demon to leave the body in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. So this, and if it doesn't, then they keep praying. So there was a story of this priest who has performed exorcisms for um, 27 years in Italy. And he told an interesting story. But first of all, he, they are saying before you see him, you have to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Uh -huh. so, so we'll just put you on medication anyway. So he's, this is a story he tells about a woman he treated for, note, 13 years. And he, she, he said a man who was a Satanist wanted her. And she refused. So he, the Satanist, how they knew what he was, I don't know, cast so-called spells to attract her to him twice a week. So he knows a lot about this man, right? So they came, this woman came to him, they prayed, she went into a trance, and then she started to vomit up little metal pins five at a time. What? Then she also would vomit hair braids, little stones, and pieces of wood. So she had pica syndrome. She would eat that. Probably. Mm -hmm. So he says, the priest, it sounds like something from another world, but instead it's something from this world. So they're, they're putting these things into your she head. She has pica. I've, about I've worked with people like demons. that. And, thing, and trans and all those kind of things. And then um, they were talking about an 85-year-old French priest who was killed in his church in the French city of Rouen. And uh, I didn't, didn't take the year, but they said that it's related to drug-related violence, including human sacrifice. And this is in France. So what does it got to do with demonic possession? Because they're saying that the demons now are... This is why the, the exorcisms are important, because uh -huh. of the demonic possessions that are growing, mm -hmm. such as what happened to this priest in I this see. French city of Rouen. Uh -huh. 
Uh -huh. Okay, and then in Mexico, priests there said that as much as we believe that the devil was behind Adolf Hitler, we believe that the devil's behind the drug cartels. And Mexico's exorcists say there's an unprecedented demand for their services. In fact, there's a lot of nuts in uh, Mexico. Some of the well, the, this is through the Catholic Church. Some of the priests are so busy exercising demons almost every day they can't even take on new clients. Wow! And they say in Mexico, I don't, I had, I've heard of it briefly, but never paid too much attention. So maybe you have. Have you heard of the cult of death called Santa Muerte? Oh yeah. Okay. So he said that apparently the worshippers fo uh, the the followers worship a skull in a wedding dress carrying a scythe has over 8 million followers in Mexico, which I didn't know. I'm not surprised. More among Mexican migrants in Central America than also the U.S. plus Canada. And he says they've been a, this religion has been adopted by the drug traffickers to help the um, saint death, to help them to avoid arrest and make money. And in exchange, they offer human sacrifices. Uh -huh. So the priests... Well, then that's uh, what could go wrong. So the priests are saying that this is these are all... Uh, reasons why that mm. they need to do exorcisms, but yet if it's saint death, isn't that part of the Catholic religion to start with? Well, there is the uh, November one is the, the yes uh, day, day of the, the dead. dead. It's dead. part of that, yeah. and it said that um, uh, over the years the military in Mexico has discovered numerous shrines, temples, and even churches of Saint Death across the region, and plenty of evidence of human sacrifice. Yeah, you just drive down any street in Mexico and you'll find human sacrifice. In 1999, the Catholic Church carried out its first major update to the rules surrounding exorcism since 1614 mm. and distinguished between demonic possession and physical or psychological So illness. it took them 400 years to update their Because doctrine. now they're updating what they're going to give you and what they want you to do and follow right. and practice. Mm. So I think all this is very fascinating. If you want more information on history, we'll start with Stuart Says. This is a great little coffee table book blue blood true blood I mean, coffee table book it should be like a, a college uh, study on it this will tell you the history galactic history as well specifically and a lot of alien stuff and this one has to do with true world history so these are this is all fascinating reads told you about those for mind control to watch your own mind we've got our healing series hyperspace helper Basic deprogramming exercises, control your own mind so somebody doesn't do it for you. Hyperspace Plus, which is more advanced exercises. And this is one of our getting, ga gaining popularity, healing archetypes and symbols. This is also fascinating. Mm -hmm. Decoding your life. You want to know universal law? Remember, universal law is neutral. It's how you use it. You understand this, you'll understand what the global handlers are doing to you in a negative way. Understand this to elevate yourself. And, of course, we have the White Owl Legends, which is an archetypal story of creation that was given to um, a spiritualist trans medium that instructed my father back in the 40s. So, I have lots of information for you. And then, of course, this is my go-to book, Affirmations for Self-Change. There is 1,099 of them in here. So, you pick it up, you open it up, and something will speak to you, and you'll have something to do which will give you guidance. Something like a voice in your head? Not quite like that. And then, of course, my children's series, which I have one more, which will be out before the end of May, mm -hmm. the one on protection, the one on the chakra system, and the one on the energy fields called auras. So always have lots of things to do. And I will tell you, right now on my blog, we're doing amazing work on isolation programming, mm -hmm. what it is, how to break it down, get out of it, connect with yourself, with your source, with other people. It's a really fantastic work and, people and are doing And it's really on the great that you use me as an example by isolating me to yeah. show people what, that, what will happen. Yeah, that's what happens. That was very nice of you. Yes, I thought so. Mm -hmm. So thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing our YouTube page. Um, we want to remember that Stuart and I will be traveling within a month. The first place we're going is actually Istanbul, but after that, we have in uh, June our Italy trip, and we still have one space. I have it temporarily well, spoken it's for. it's kind of taken. Well, it's only temporarily because we don't have the, the the financial commitment. So once the financial commitment is made, it's gone. But this, the but you're not going to bump me off of it, are I you? I might, but we will need to have everything secured by April 30th. So if you're interested, I will start a, mo mm. a waiting list for you. But April 30th is our deadline. One space available. We're also going to be taking a train trip to Switzerland, to Tun. Where my family originated. Yeah, so that's going to be fascinating. And then um, we have 
we always do so much research, whether it's at home or on the go. People send us things. September, spectacular is going to be spectacular. Really spectacular. A lot of things, a lot of research is going on. A couple of guest speakers. We have a p potential for a couple of guest speakers. Mm -hmm. We're waiting on confirmations for certain things. Mm -hmm. But we do not record. People have asked us that we don't. don't you have record. to be here because we had do a lot of interaction. It's a it's smaller person. It's too much person. for a week to record all that. No one's going to sit and watch five days, six days worth of stuff. Besides that, this is the time for you to come and we personalize the information we give so you can apply whatever we tell you to to yourself, to your own genetic structure, to your energetic structure, to your oversoul matrix. It goes on and on and on and on and on. So it's a time to spend with other people of like mine to get a chance to visit with Stuart and I a little bit, which is a real mm -hmm. treat. No right? seeming. Yeah. So anyway, we appreciate your support as always. Please consider mm -hmm. membership on our website. Join our monthly blogs, mm -hmm. which are fascinating, even to me. And, and uh, the podcast format may be different in the next few weeks since our camera person will be on a trip for a while yeah. and plus so, then we're going to be traveling so you may be interrupted with our podcast on and off we'll do the mm -hmm. best that we can from wherever we are in the world mm -hmm. but if you are so missing if, if if we're a little bit late or we skip a week or so that's the reason why yeah but keep watching, keep sharing, keep liking. We appreciate your support. And again, thank you very much for your kind comments on the YouTube channel. I will tell you here, and you've been much better with your language. I did post reluctantly a couple of comments here within a couple of days, or maybe that was you that posted it. And they had some, some really... They uh, did? I didn't post anything like that. Well, then I must have been the one, but I saw it up there. Maybe it was our camera person that did it. But anyway, mm -hmm. there were a couple words in there that... I, I reluctantly posted it, but please do not use bad language. We try to keep it yes, family that's oriented. that's my job. Yeah. So please try to elevate, and we don't want that low-level stuff out there. So, you know, we're not here to attack each other. If you disagree, that's okay. Don't call people names. That's really low-level, childish, immature mm -hmm. behavior. We want to rise above that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So take care, and we will see you when we see you. See you at some point. Bye. Bye.